So you are the youngest commissioner in the European Union. Hmm? Yes, congratulations. I, am. <laughs> I don't know if it's achievement, but okay, I'll. Uh, but I think the, the, the field you work in, uh, the field of environment and sustainability, yeah. is a field that more and more young people are getting interested in, implementing it in their everyday life, thinking about it. So how do you explain it to your children and how do you implement it in your life? I think first of all, you know, uh, explaining it to, to, to children, it does not really require extra explanation because if you do it very naturally at home, for example, you recycle, Okay. They, they, they do it, they, uh -huh. they take it naturally. So, so they, they see the example? Exactly. For example, my children, they don't imagine that there is uh, no recycling way. Uh, you don't use, you know, plastic straws and etc. They don't imagine that there is someone who is using the, the, the plastic straw because, you know, at the end of the day, you construct the world for, 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 for your children. So they, they are very much surrounded by, by, by these very natural habitats and that becomes their natural habits. What can we elders do to create a more sustainable future, both in everyday life and as a part of, uh, I don't know, initi initiatives? I think it's always about, you know, choices you make. Uh, and uh, that cannot be unnatural, you know. Uh, the government cannot force it on you, you know. It has to be natural. You have to, to feel it, yeah? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you can start with your consumption pattern, okay? Maybe you don't, you don't believe in climate change, but you probably believe in your family budget. Yeah. So, you know, you can save a lot of your family budget and help environment tremendously by not consuming more than you can, uh, than you need. Uh, secondly, you know, your choices of, uh, of uh, transportation, for example. Do you really need to sit on your own in that, uh, you know, polluting Big car, car yeah. in, in the traffic or you can take, uh, take a bike and be healthier, especially when, when you're getting older. These bike rides, they, they really do help your health. Um, save you money because you don't spend any 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 on gas, and this is the best way for you to go around the traffic or use. Especially a, in the big cities, like yeah, public transportation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Or, or flat cities like we live in, in in Belgium. They are pretty flat and with a good infrastructure. So there is, I think, you know, it all starts with your personal choices. And when people ask me this question, so what can I do? Because you know, emissions is some global global thing. No, it all starts with your own consumption pattern and step-by-step -step changes you take in your life yeah uh, absolutely but if we target some special fields now in our conversation so uh, when we go to adriatic sea every every year with our yeah. family to our vacation there is a lot of plastic waste floating yeah. around and polluting the the shores uh, mm -hmm. what is what is the the eu strategy uh, handling the, the the specific plastic waste that is gathering in the seas yeah. and especially how do you uh, preserve the sea life. Plastic is another very good visible example how our overconsumption can choke uh, the, the world, things yeah. that we love. Okay. You know, I think, you know, I'm coming from the Baltic Sea and everyone loves to spend their summers at the Baltic Sea. Like here with the... With we the, go with to Adriatic, Adriatic, yeah. Exactly. We so love it. The thing is with, with our uh, plastic consumption that it's not sustainable. Uh, yes, member states uh, did uh, uh, good work in increasing recycling. However, the use of plastic has significantly increased. So we have increasing recycling, but even more usage of, of plastic. And that, of course, then generates waste, which uh, countries are not able to, to deal with. So we are now proposing a new, completely different legislation with uh, already, first of all, you know, tackling uh, pollution at the source. Okay. So all the pollution that you see at the sea, it came from the land. Of course. So you have to tackle it at the source and you need to get rid of uh, useless uh, uh, plastic uh, packaging, for example, that absolutely do no uh, functions at all. For example, you know, I'm still shocked to see these small bottles in the hotels. You know, yeah, of course. reusable, refillable, they exist for many, many years and it's absolutely fine with people. So why do you need these small, small, uh, small plastic bottles? The same goes with all the you know sauces that you have, ketchup, of course, and, and in this in little the packages, and the yeah. small packaging, and, and etc., which is completely, completely unnecessary. So stuff. you're going to ban it, or yes, they're yeah? going to be they're going to be banned. Some of that uh, uh, packaging will be banned. Second thing is uh, is reuse. So okay. we need to increase reuse much more in the areas where we can uh, can do, do it. it. Yeah. Yes, and uh, the third part is of course recycling. But for example, in some member states, we see that when they don't have a uh, deposit system, okay. uh -huh, a it's... lot of a lot of cans, uh, a lot of plastic bottles, uh, glass bottles, and etc., they end up somewhere on the floor, 
And for example, uh, a couple of weekends ago, I cleaned the Brussels uh, canal with with my son in 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 kayak. Okay. And you know, you see a lot of a lot of a lot of bottles which you don't find in some member states. Why? Because they have a deposit system. Deposit system works that you know yeah. people are bound to to bring it back. So I think these three things can do a significant change. One field that is also problematic is the field of clothing. Yeah. You know, so Fashion Week just happened in Ljubljana a couple uh-huh. of days ago. And uh, these designers, local designers, especially if they're sustainable, they uh, find it very difficult to compete with this yeah. fast everyday fashion. So is there an initiative also going on in European yeah. Union that, that could help these designers? So in our sustainable fashion strategy, Uh, what we want to achieve, we want to first of all tackle fast fashion. Of course, it's always very difficult for uh, small designers uh, to compete with the with the large ones uh, because they have a completely completely different uh, business model. And small ones, they're usually the most sustainable ones because yeah. they don't have they don't have uh, resources to waste of them. Of course. Uh, so we are trying to approach now with the producer responsibility scheme. Okay. So basically what you produce or what you put on the EU market, you will be responsible for cleaning it as well. Ah, so okay. for collecting it and etc. If you won't be able to reach certain percentage, you will have to pay for it. You won't be able to produce uh, anymore. Uh, you, you will have to pay for it. Okay. So it will cost yeah. you. So okay. you either produce as much as you can sell because now, for example, we have hundreds of, of millions of value in destroyed goods. So for example, very no- well known brands When they don't sell the just destroyed, the yeah. spring collection, let's say, yeah. and then they cannot resell it through through their other stores, they just destroy it at the end of the end millions in, in, in value. And that's also destroyed resources because to produce uh, those clothes they used a lot of water, they used a lot of chemicals, uh, and, and and so on. So all those resources they just wasted without even you know putting them them on. And with fast fashion, that's even a bigger problem because of course, on one hand, You know, uh, people will uh, going to buy clothes that uh, they can afford. Uh, of course. Yeah. But uh, the problem with fast fashion that people are buying so much that at the end of the day, some of those clothes they are never worn, or they are worn once, and then they, they you know uh, change color or or they not in the same shape and they just thrown 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 away. Only one percentage out of all clothes that 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 we wear is uh, being recycled. The rest is either incinerated, so basically okay, burned, burned yeah. or end up somewhere exported to Africa and dumped, uh, dumped, yeah. dumped there. So that's 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 even 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 bigger issue. So you're going to follow it from the source to the to the end yes, to the recycle. Absolutely, the whole life cycle approach. This is the only way I think circular economy can work when you start with the design. So I think what we need to ensure that the clothes that are produced that they would be much more recyclable. Because now, with some of the chemicals used, some of the uh, some of the materials mixed, it's not possible oh, to recycle okay. them. The best thing, actually, that what happens to clothes is the second life that they are sold on some platforms yeah. or second-hand shops and etc. And again, we That's, come to, we come to young people that are thrifting, that exactly. are using it. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. Because it's more approachable and it's more affordable. But yeah. now it's becoming yeah. very trendy. It's you know, becoming so, trendy. Yeah. Yeah. If we uh, touch now the green deal. Yeah. If you start to read it, it reads kind of complicated. Yeah. But what, what what do you think are the main focuses that every European should know? And how will it influence our life in short and in long term? First of all, Green Deal should not be approached as some environmental or climate policy. It's absolutely wrong. It's uh, our growth strategy. Okay. It's uh, about the future of our economy. The way, yeah. How it's going go. to, to look like. So in a short term, it's, it's, you know, such a big horizontal change, never easy. Because that's definitely going to have one or the other way uh, impact on the way everybody we, lives. We do things. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, in the long term, I think uh, we will have a much cleaner air uh, around us. Uh, so not only in the parks, uh, surrounded by trees, we will enjoy it, but uh, hopefully also uh, around the schools, kindergartens, around the living areas where where people do live uh, okay. in, in 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 the cities. Uh, secondly, I think we will be leading in a clean tech. And I hope that the solutions that we are now, uh, you know, developing on which we are working in Europe, they will be all across the world. Um, and uh, and thirdly, hopefully, we will be able to avoid uh, severe weather events as much as possible. You know, you, it's not all of them due to climate change, 
but uh, they are much more severe and 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 and, and deeper in scale because of the, the the climate event because of the you know climate crisis biodiversity once they reinforce each, each each other so i truly hope that we will be able to avoid the severity of that but what do you think are the the greatest challenges the greatest challenge i think overall the scope of of the change, of the change yeah. that, that 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 we need to do uh, and then on one hand, I can say that businesses, they already see that uh, there is no other way around it. Because if you have emissions price around 80 euro today, in 10 years, it can be 200 or it can be 2000. Yeah. And it will be very, very difficult for your dirty uh, uh, polluting business to survive. Of if course. you won't be able to, uh, to change in these years where you have so much extra money put forward. Secondly, I think, you know, uh, there is still a political clash. And there is those that are denying that that, that things as, as climate are change changing or, yeah. or biodiversity loss is is is, is happening. Um, and thirdly, I think we need to ensure that it's global. And, but and how to big, do it? Because uh, Europe is really yeah. small, also in small but pollution. powerful. Small but powerful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think you know uh, because that's that's the the, the, the the thing with climate uh, policies, with biodiversity policies that none of the country nor I, uh, of the region can fight it on its own. So we need to tackle it globally and that's of course a challenge to get everyone, everyone get together. On, board. Yeah. on one hand, you have many countries um, that are way, way less developed than us and they do understand the climate severity because you know they already have uh, you know climate pressures raising sea levels that cause migration people have to leave their their, their, their homes uh, they cannot farm as they used to and and etc so that's already putting pressures on the other hand you still have you know large emitters uh, so china india who are still you know their emissions are are increasing and that's of course puts uh, a competitive pressure but we have uh, Together with our legislation, we have ensured that uh, you know if you want to enjoy our single market, which is one of the the powerful tools that we have, you will have to ensure that you uh, you will uh, have to obey exactly by <laughs> the same standards yeah. as as European producers. Which is the the last agreement you managed to to reach that you're particularly proud of in this field? <laughs> You know, each agreement when we reach, I'm, I'm particularly <laughs> proud of. So, uh, not to downplay any 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 of them because the huge and historic one, the Global Biodiversity Framework on uh, on in, in in Montreal. But the latest one, yeah. which I had an honor to sign in in New York, um, together with Commission President, uh, was the uh, agreement on so-called the high seas. So okay. the protection of the high seas, uh, and it means 95% of the ocean, uh, because uh, you know. Even here, being in Slovenia, we think of ocean something very distant. But to be honest, if we lose the functions of the ocean... It influences us all, yeah. We are done. We see uh, it now with this weather changing. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, if the ecosystem is not able to cope with the absorb emissions... Uh, it's going to collapse. The yeah. climate, it doesn't matter. We can reach zero uh, emissions. We can go into into the minus. We still bust it yeah. because there is no technology that can replace it. So I think BBNJ is a big, big agreement on protection of the high seas, and I'm of course extremely proud that we've managed to achieve it. Perfect. You work in a field which has a lot of uh, uh, of activists. Yeah. Is there any environmentalist you're really uh, inspired inspired there by it? Yeah. You know, overall, I think uh, uh, you know the. People uh, who, who defend the environment, they, they, they deserve a lot of respect because usually this is not a very profitable way uh, and uh, people, they defend, you know, uh, trees, soils, ocean. This is not something that will line up behind you and say thank you. Yeah, you know, and go accept. for it. Yeah. Exactly. So this is a big, big, big. It's like Don Quixote, yeah. Big, yeah. big yeah. mission, yeah, yeah. So, so all of them, they have uh, my full, full, full respect and gratitude. Uh, one particular one, if you want me to single out, I would like to say probably Enrique Sala. Okay. It's the Natural Geographic, uh, uh, one of the chief uh, explorers, chief uh, scientists, uh, who has done a incredible work as regards the marine protection okay. uh, if you look at the you know 
Central uh, America, South America, and the waters around there, the way he managed to convince the governments to protect uh, the areas and, and, and so on is, is significant. And uh, I mean, he's, uh, he's an excellent uh, person, uh, always very positive, always very inspiring. So I would say, you know, if I need to single out one, he would be the one. Uh, he would be the one. We believe that we are at the threshold at the third of the third industrial revolution. Uh, you, you're right. We, we are at the end. You know, the way we uh, used to think, produce things, yeah. it's, it's, it has to be the best. And I think uh, now there is a way for clean tech. And, and clean technologies are gaining more and more ground. And I'm pretty sure that with their expansion, with the investments into, into the clean technologies, uh, they will be more and more affordable. And more and more people are going to take them on. Absolutely, and, businesses so. and so on. So, you know, because it's it's always difficult, these changes for uh, small enterprises, because the uptake is not so high, because they don't have, you know, free capital, of uh, cash flow in, in order to invest into 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 technologies. Uh, bank loans are, you know, difficult to, 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 to get comparing to, to, to bigger companies. So uh, that's why we need to ensure that this affordability of clean technologies would be as broad as possible across Europe. Perfect. Thank you very much for your work and uh, keep it going. <laughs> My pleasure. Thank you very <laughs> Thank much. Thank you.